right, guys thank you for clicking on the video first of all I appreciate the support we're at 33 subscribers I know it doesn't seem like quite a bit of it doesn't seem like a huge number at all whatsoever compared to some of these people that have you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers but to me you know I've seen this channel go from uh, five subscribers and then like a month ago we were at 17 so for for me to see 33 right now I don't know I'm just I know that this information is helpful I know that uh, these videos are I don't know somehow they're helping somebody out there so I just want to continue that and I just want to thank you guys for that today we're going to be talking about chlorine and different types of chlorine um, and just maybe with this video you'll see what you want to use and how each one of these affects the pool you'll also learn that it's very important to look at the active ingredient in what you're buying so that you know what you're using so the first one we're gonna see is sodium hypochlorite and this is i would say the most common out there uh, the most common type of chlorine and this is going to be your liquid chlorine also known as your as as bleach um, so this is going to be liquid chlorine it's the easiest way to add chlorine and uh, let me show you a picture so you'll usually see it in two and a half gallon jugs in some places this is going to be like um like florida if we look right here at the bottom it's actually um like an advertisement for Miami. So that's Florida. In Southern California where I'm at, we see these crates here with one gallon um, with, with one gallon containers. And that's what it's gonna look like. Um, again, liquid chlorine, its sci scientific name is sodium hypochlorite. Um, you can just add it to the pool wherever you want. Um, since it's liquid, it mixes right in. It's non-stabilized. What this means is that it's not gonna cause your uh, conditioner levels or CYA levels to go up. Um, it has a high pH. So if you add quite a bit of it, your your pH is gonna go up. So just, just a heads up. Maybe something you wanna uh, keep an eye in or keep an eye on if you're um, doing like a startup or something like that. Next type of chlorine we're gonna look at is calcium hypochlorite. This is also very common and it's usually referred to as calhypo. Um, when you go to, to the distributor or we go to a store, you can ask for calhypo. They'll know what you're talking about. If you call it the full name, I don't know, they might look at you crazy, but calhypo. This comes in powder form or granular, and you usually add this to the skimmer. It goes through the equipment and shoots back out into the pool. Um, show you a picture really quick. Right here it says powder granular. But again, it's very important that we look at the uh, active ingredients because that's going to tell you what what it's made out of. Um, here we can see that it says calcium hypochlorite here. Uh, so let's go back to our PowerPoint or to our keynote. Non-stabilized, okay? So it's not gonna raise your conditioner levels or CYA levels either. High pH, this will also raise your pH. So uh, I know the liquid chlorine has like a pH close to 12 and so does the cal hypo. Um, you do not want to mix this with trichlor. Um, you don't want to mix this with tabs because it will react and it will cause an explosion. And we'll talk about that in a second. So that's calhypo. Uh, now we're going to look at sodium dichlor. And this is commonly referred to as quick dissolve. And I don't know, I personally have not used this too many times. And, uh, but anyways, this is mostly sold to spa owners because of that. Uh, quality that it does have of, of that um, property that it has that that it dissolves quick you can add it to spas um, this is different than the other two we've seen so far because it's stabilized so this will raise your conditioner levels or your CYA levels 
they will go up if you use this often. So you wanna be careful how often you're using this. It is quick dissolve again, so perfect for the spas. Uh, just keep an eye on that CYA level. It's also pH neutral, which is perfect for those, um, for those spas because let's say you're using liquid in a spa. You, you can do, use just a little bit of liquid, but it's gonna raise that pH level really fast. So this is um, a solution for that. Just watch those CYA levels and I'm gonna show you a picture of that as well. This is a Leslie's 25 pound bucket here. And again, if you look at your active ingredients, it's hard to see, but it says sodium dichlor. We read right here as well, sodium dichlor, granular chlorine. We look at uh, quick dissolve, uh, a search on Google. You'll see that this says uh, quick dissolving. And actually, I think this has calcium hypochlorite. So again, you, you really just want to look at that uh, active ingredient because very easily they can put quick dissolving and uh, cow shock, obviously. You're dealing with cow hypo there. So labels are super important so you know what you're using. Quick dissolve. Um, we'll, look at, we'll look at bags in a second. So that's sodium dichlor and those are the properties for that. Now we're gonna look at trichlor, and I think besides liquid chlorine, trichlor is gonna be the most common type of chlorine because everybody uses tabs. So right here I have most commonly handled by homeowner. You know, a homeowner that's uh, you know taking care of their own pool, uh, they're gonna use a lot of tabs because all they have to do is get two or three tabs, put some in the in a floater. And, and they're pretty much gonna have a clear pool. The problem though, is that since the tabs are stabilized, you're gonna raise conditioner levels pretty fast. So usually when you, you take over a pool where a homeowner was taking care of it, if you see a high conditioner level, if you see a high CYA level, um, you're immediately gonna know why. They, they were just using tabs and only tabs to chlorinate their pool. They also have a low pH. Tabs have a low pH. Trichlor in granular form um, has a low pH. So if you use too many tabs in a pool or in a spa, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have a low pH. And you really gotta watch that because too low of a pH, um, too low alkalinity levels, you're gonna end up um, making a heater go bad. You're gonna uh, corrode the metal inside the heater. So gotta uh, be careful with that. And again, cow hypo does not mix with trichlor. It reacts and it causes explosions and it's happened in people's trucks and it happens in the equipment area at people's homes. And I'll explain why. So right here I searched um, uh, for chlorine feeder for pool just so I can show you some images of the chlorine feeders right here we have a picture of uh, this one's called an inline uh, chlorine feeder because it goes in the line in the plumbing line um, this one here is a Hayward one so they they look they all look different um, they also have uh, some that aren't in line that you basically uh, this one here in the back as you can see, um, it has a hose and you basically drill a hole in the plumbing and you drill another hole right by where the pump is and it's basically pushing water inside. It goes to the chlorine tabs and comes back out through the return line somewhere else um, after the heater. If you see one of these in the equipment area, if you see one of these, you do not want to add Cal Hypo to the skimmer. Why? Because you do not want to mix. Oh, actually, <laughs> I didn't even notice this, but if we look at this picture here, you see that bulge. Well, if we read what it says right there, it says pool ripoffs and explosions. So this will happen. This will happen at someone's home. This can happen in your truck if you mix. Cal with trichlor. So just really careful guys. 
I cannot stress this enough, Calhypo and Trichlor do not go together. And let me show you a picture of the tabs. This is something you can find at Home Depot. Again, if we look at active ingredients, you see that Trichlor is on there. Pool Logic, very uh, popular brand as well. If we look at active ingredients, it says Trichlor there. And then they also sell it, like I said, in granular form. So we see here chlorine granular uh, two pounder here. And uh, it literally says trichlor there. We look at the tag, active ingredients, trichlor. Sold as an algicide. Um, so the point of this video here really is um, to explain the types of chlorines, their properties, and to just basically um, remind you of, of how important it is to read uh, the labels on these different types of, of chlorine so you know what you're using because like I said, there's certain things you don't wanna mix. So this one here, we look at the active ingredient and it says calcium hypochlorite. We look at the chlorbrite, these are the one pound bags here. And if we look at the active ingredient, can't really see it, but we already saw earlier on the Leslie's website that the, their chlorbrite is actually sodium dichlor. So there it is, sodium dichlor. So just look at that, um, just look at that label and you'll figure out what you're working with. If you need to go back to the video to read these uh, bullets, so you see what the properties are. Um, yeah, no one explained this to me. It's just kind of had to learn it on my own, do some reading, but hopefully this video helps you guys out. Thank you for watching. Please give it a like. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And again, I really appreciate the support. You guys have a good one. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll get to it as soon as I can.